All right, guys, we got a pretty simple machining project right here. This is comes at request from a longtime Patreon supporter, Andrew Rose. And what appears to be kind of like a rod end or a clevis, I'm not sure exactly how he uses these, but I do know that uh, he said that this goes with some of his camping gear and he's in need of two of these. And uh, it's been waiting a little while for me to get to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this knocked out. Uh, I did say make them out of aluminum. So I've got this piece of aluminum bar stock right here. This is probably 6061. That's what we always had. It's just a leftover piece that uh, has been on the shelf. So since we're gonna, since he needs two of them, I think what we'll do is we'll do the lathe work on one end, flip it around, do the lathe work on the other. And then we'll go to the mill, hold it in our indexer and do the milling for the flats and then drill the hole. I plan on doing the turning and the radius in the lathe and I pretty much get most of the machine work done. And then once all this is turned and milled, drilled, we'll go to the bandsaw, cut it off, set it back up in the lathe, face the end and put our tapped hole in the end. That'll be probably the last stop we make. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, get started on this. We were starting with inch and a half material. <clears throat> That's the best thing I had in, in stock here. So we're just turning it down to one inch. So this is my setup for cutting the uh, radius here. I'm using a four flute corner rounding end mill and we'll put it in the, uh, the tool holder here and use that to come, come up here and cut that radius. I always have people ask me how the setup is. So <clears throat> this is a, a common reducer bushing, three quarter on the ID, inch and a quarter on the OD. It's got the flat, so it works perfect in these multi-fix type bore and bar holders. So I stick that in there, it's got a flat and it's split, <clears throat> so whenever you clamp on it, it squeezes against the shank of the tool here. That's how that works. I'm just gonna stick it in there like so. We'll have that one set screw here, clamping it down, but what I'm gonna do is get one of these cutting edges here, the one of the cutting, the flute, lined up nice and level and even on the center line of the tool. And then once we get that, I'll just do that by, by sight. And uh, once we do, we just tighten it down just like that. And that's how we get in there and cut our radius, just like so. All right, I got a little bit of aluminum tap magic here we'll use to uh, lubricate it while we do our cut. So that was already, it should have already been on center because I took a corner rounding end mill out. So I'll just come up here and get it cut. And once you get the radius down to the very center, if you have a little nub there, 
you have to just kind of adjust the height and get it so that it cuts on center for you. All right, we got to go in on Z just a little bit more. Looks like we're going to be real close. Using the brush helps brush the chips away while you're doing this. Just a little bit more on Z. Trying to, once you get that full radius cut, that's when things are going to start chattering, especially if you don't have any tool pressure, trying to remove metal. And so you try to, you try to get in and out as quick as you can. Make the cut and pull it out and not let the tool rub any particular amount of time because that's when you start getting that chatter. But, I mean, that looks beautiful right there. I think we, hit, I think we nailed it. There may be just one tiny little flat at the end. Let me see if I can do it again. like that. I think that's going to work pretty good right about there. You see what a nice job those corner rounding end mills do on a, on a lathe for cutting a radius. So we've got our lathe work for one end completed right there. And what I did was I left that a little bit big. And we, after I cut the radius, I machined it the size because the OD is actually 15 sixteenths. And the closest uh, corner rounding end mill that I have is a, is a half inch to match that radius. So what I do, once I turn this down, I just go in here and just kind of blend this radius back in there to kind of make the whole radius complete. And it's, it's nothing critical. It's just a nice radius that matches the diameter of the rod there. So that's what we did. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this around and repeat the process. By the way, before I started, I went ahead and chucked it up and just uh, very lightly run a, a flat file over the top and an emery. That way there was no dings or dents in the uh, rod from it you know, being handled. That's gonna mess it up whenever we set it up in the chuck because I plan on going over there to the mill using the uh, spacer to hold this in the same place to do our flats. All right, so we're gonna try to stick it through here without scratching up our end. All right, we're just gonna repeat the process of what you just saw right here. So I'm not gonna show all that again, maybe a couple of close-ups of some of the turning or uh, cutting the radius anyway, I like to show you that. And then uh, once we finish this lathe work here, we'll move over and get our mill set up to do our flats and our drill holes.
This job is going to be the perfect opportunity to use my new 6-inch Vertex Simple Indexing Spacer. I bought this from KBC Tools. They were able to source it for me. I like the Vertex brand because if you look right behind us there, all right, that's my 8-inch Vertex Super Spacer. That's one that my dad bought for us, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And it, and it is an excellent tool. These are made over in Taiwan. And I think that the quality that they put into these spacers right here are excellent because I've run that one for, I don't know, maybe 20 years now. Uh, when I was at Motion, uh, they bought one for me there, same exact thing. And then so what the purpose of this one is, is that it's a much smaller compact size versus the eight inch there. And the, also the difference is the eight inch super spacer has the worm gear built into it. So you can use it like a dividing head. This one here is the simple indexing spacer, so it does not have the worm gear. It's, uh, it just has the, uh, the 24 divisions that you can click this thing into. It also comes with the plates that you can um, put back here. So if you want to have a plate where you have four divisions, six divisions, you know, things like that, you can put those indexing plates in there. I don't ever use them. I just, I just use the, uh, the, uh, the angles up here click it where I want. So this is your lock and then you have a little paddle here that you disengage to, to rotate it and you just drop it in whatever position you want. Just like so. So much lighter than the 8 inch. That thing is just super heavy. I got to where I just I don't like moving that thing anymore. So this will be a nice smaller unit and I also plan on being able to use this over with the uh, flex arm when that's needed as well. I was about machining actually like a little fixture plate that this thing can mount to that you can clamp in the vise. And when I want to hold something round over there for the uh, flex arm use, we can use this guy there as well. So anyway, we're going to get it set up, squared up, and we'll start our, our uh, milling over here. Here's an easy way to square these guys up whenever you want to set them up for a quick use, especially if you're just doing something like milling flats, like what we're going to do. If you're doing something really precision, then you need to indicate this and make sure that you're square to the, to the table. But since this is made for laying flat on either side, you know, horizontal, vertical, this is a nice ground surface. So just take a machinist square. This is a 12-inch machinist square. And what we'll do is hold it square against the table like this come up to this very gently and you can see we're off right there. We can just push it just like that until it's squared up. And that is going to put you extremely close and square, good enough for milling flats on rods. And we'll tighten this one down and we got another bolt on the front, a T-nut, we'll tighten that one down. We got our work piece set in there in the spacer. We are ready to go. I've got my offsets already uh, pre-programmed on the DRO. So my plan is we'll go ahead and I'm gonna do each end at a time. I wanna get this side milled, both sides, get our hole drilled in there, chamfer it, and then we'll flip it around and just duplicate it on the other side there. So we've got it set at zero. We'll do one side, rotate it 180 degrees to the other. I have a little white dot right there. I always like using the little oil button here at the top of the spacer as like my zero reference. They actually have it, it's over on the back side, but the way that I like to use this in this orientation, you can't see it. So I always use the button as the zero reference and I just put a dot there where the zero line always uh, centers up. So we'll go ahead and start our cuts. We're all gonna be using the uh, Tung Alloy. This is the Tung Force Tri, triangular shape insert and it does really well. All right, just making sure everything is good to go here. We've got the spacer locked, Y is locked. Let's uh, make a hundred thousandths cut there. So we'll be taking 344 thousandths off each side. The center of it is gonna end up being a quarter inch thick. Just work into my zero location on the, the DRO. Bring it in by hand to zero. Another hundred thousandths. Go 
This is 300. I'm going to go ahead and square that up and get rid of the bulk of that. Leave it about 10,000 shy so we can clean it up. And we'll make our finished cut here. I'm going to put a little bit of this tap magic on here help improve the finish for our final cut. Ten thousandths to clean up the shoulder. Just doing that to kind of even out the cut pattern there on the on the flat. All right. All right, so one side done. That looks nice. Got a nice finish there. Super smooth. All right. Go ahead and loosen our lock. And they supply you with this little handle right here. It's like a pin spanner you can use to rotate it with. Going around to 180 and then let it click into the notch right there. Lock it in. We're ready to do some milling. I'll try to give you guys some better shots of that, some more close-ups. Got our two sides milled. Let's see where I landed on my size there. Before I take that last cut, I always mic it and make sure that we try to land on our target size. So we want quarter inch. Looks like I'm, I don't know, maybe three, four tenths under that. So I'd say we, <coughs> we, we hit it right where we want it. That looks like 249. I'll tell you what, I'll just read it. 249 and I'm gonna call that six, six tenths so we finished four tenths under quarter inch that's going to be good to go so swap this out for a drill we'll get in our drill our hole put a chamfer on each side the edges we'll just have to uh, file that by hand to clean that up so our hole size is just on the on the print three eighths through hole so i'm going to try to make that a nice pretty hole so we're going with a 2360 force drill bit and then we will run through there with a, a three eighths reamer to hopefully clean the hole up nice if i if i had to guess it's just a bolt that goes through there, but we're just gonna try to make it uh, on size into the print, okay? All right, now our 3 8 reamer. Using some tap magic here to help lube it.
Just like that. Simple does it. All right, and then one last step. We'll take our, take a chamfering tool and break both sides of that nicely. What I'm gonna do is I got a, I got this set up on a stop there. So I'm all the way down on the stop. I'm gonna use the hand crank on the knee to come up, touch it just like that. That looks pretty good, but I'm gonna come up a few more thou. That looks good right there. All right, we'll take and rotate it back around here to our zero. Come down and bump our stop. And that should match it nicely right there. All right. Okay, one end is machine minus our deburring. So what we'll do from here is go ahead and take it out, flip it around, and we're gonna do everything one more time on the other side. All right, we got both ends milled. We're gonna take it out of here. I'll probably go ahead and uh, deburr the ends so I'll have a way to easily hold on to it. And then we'll cut them off and then finish the, the last bit of lathe work, facing and drilling and tapping.
All right, there's our nearly finished pieces. So this length right here is going to finish out at one inch. So I left myself about a sixteenth of an inch there to face the end. Just a little bit longer. So just go back to the lathe, chuck it, face it, drill it, and uh, I don't know. We may just we may just hand tap it right there in the lathe after we drill it. Make sure it's got a couple chamfers, and once that's done, these these parts will be ready to go. All right, just spot it in and we'll drill it 5 sixteenths. You use this uh, Chicago Latrobe 5 sixteenths drill. This is the uh, reduced length drill. Love using these types. All right, we're going to take it 3 quarter inches deep. Half inch. And give it a chamfer here. We're going to use a spring center here in the chuck. All right, we're going to be going in with our Cleveland 3816 spiral fluted tap here. We'll just hand tap it. Use some more of this aluminum cutting fluid here. All right, that's the bottom there. All right, that is one completed right there. I still got to drill and tap the second one. Turned out good. Looks nice. All right, one more to tap and we'll be finished up.
All right, guys, well, we're all finished up with the two rod ends here for Mr. Andrew Rose that uh, go to his camping gear. You know, we did not get into specifics as to uh, how he uses these with his camping gear. He just said that, that these are two parts that he needs and he needed to get them replaced. And he was hoping that, that I could um, fix them up and, and machine him two of them there. So I think they turned out nice and they should be to his specifications. This was a drawing that he said that he made with all the dimensions of how he wanted it made up. So that's how, that's how we've got them done there. I think that these are gonna work fine for him for what he's gonna be doing. And I was, uh, I was happy to get them machined. So I hope you guys enjoyed following along on this little machining project, but it's always, it's always fun to be able to show you just the, you know, the different techniques that's used in manual machining to create a couple little one-off parts like this, you know, and uh, finally got some, uh, a good little job for our new six inch uh, simple indexing spacer and it worked out good. So that's it. These guys are finished up. We're going to get them wrapped up, put in a bag and uh, envelope and we'll get them sent out there to Andrew and hopefully this will uh, get him fixed up. He's got a big camping trip coming up very soon and he was hoping to have these guys for and uh, that's why I went ahead and jumped on them and, and got them knocked out. So Andrew, hopefully you enjoyed watching the video as well as everybody else. I hope you enjoyed too. Come on back and uh, we'll see you again on the next project. All right.